This is Talking Drupal, a weekly chat about web design and development from a group of people with one thing in common. We love Drupal. This is episode 408, the Drupal Association. Welcome to Talking Drupal. Today we're talking about the Drupal Association with Tim Doyle. Tim is the Chief Executive Officer at the Drupal Association. He has 25 years of experience in the nonprofit and government sectors. Most recently, he worked for a public sector startup that built an IT system serving 65 state governmental agencies in the U.S. Welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you and happy to be here. I'm Nick Laughlin, founder at Enlightened Development, and today my co-hosts are our guest host for the next four weeks is Tim Plunkett, engineering manager at Acquia. Tim has been a Drupal developer for over 15 years. Major contributions include helping getting views into core, as well as the introduction of config entities, plugins, and the object-oriented form system. Most recently, he was the co-initiative lead and primary developer of Leo Builder, and he works remotely from Philadelphia as an engineering manager on Acquia's Drupal Acceleration team. Welcome back to the show, and thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks. Also joining us, as usual, John Picozzi, Solution Architect at EPAM. Hello, internet folks. Okay, and just a little housekeeping, we do have two Tims on the show, so I'm sure there will be a little confusion, but our patrons will know that we will probably be referring to uh, Tim Doyle as T2, because I think the Drupal Association has already solved this issue with Tim Lennon and Tim Doyle. That's right, that's right. That was uh, one of my first, one of my very first decisions was, as I said earlier in the pregame, <laughs> that there would be only one Tim at the Drupal Association, so. So one question that comes up is T2, like a Terminator 2 reference or, or something, is, is that in the back I, of your I mind? think so. I just think it was a, a shorthand way of, uh, of, of saying, you know, the, the second Tim um, without, uh, you know, trying to make it sound a little cool. So I don't mind, I don't mind the Terminator reference. Could, could have also <laughs> gone with the, the second coming of Tim. <laughs> is it, you know, that would set pretty high expectations, I think. As, uh, I don't want to start with that. <laughs> fair, fair. I mean, mindless killing robot from the future is also high expectation, but. <laughs> okay, and now to talk to us about the module of the week this week, let's turn it over to Martin. Anderson includes a senior solutions engineer at Acquia and maintainer of a number of modules of his own. Martin, what do you have for us this week? Thanks, Nick. This week, I thought we would talk about the ActivityPub module, which implements the Activity Pub, the ActivityPub protocol on your site so readers can follow and respond to content on Fediverse sites like Mastodon, and in the future, possibly sites like Threads. Now, it is a module that was originally created in February of 2019. It has a 1.0.0 Alpha 17 version, which works with Drupal 9.4 and above, including Drupal 10 and was released in March of 2023. Now it's officially listed as minimally maintained and it has 43 open issues, but only two of those are bugs and one of those is already fixed, actually fixed in the past week. So it seems like it's reasonably well-maintained. Uh, it's currently officially in use by only 11 sites. Um, it was also created by a Drupal user called Swentel who also created a module for publishing Drupal content to the Nostr network. Now, the ActivityPub module works by allowing your site to act as a Fediverse server. So uh, sharing content with um, networks like Mastodon, Pleroma, uh, PixelFed, and so on. Users who enable the ActivityPub for their account have created effectively like at user, at domain in the Fediverse. So they actually can use their account on your website as sort of their account in the Fediverse. At that point, the Drupal UI provides some common features of a social client, so notifications about subscribers, the ability to respond to some activity, and so on. It does provide plugins to define user actions, so default plugins that are enabled include accept, follow, delete, and undo, as well as inbox reply, but a site could add or enable additional um, action plugins if they need to. Uh, based on the documentation in the readme, it sounds like if you update an entity, uh, so for example, change the title, you can also trigger an update activity, which is in stark contrast to a certain bird platform that our listeners may be familiar with. Uh, there's also quite a bit more in the module's readme file if you want to sort of dig in and better understand its capabilities for yourself. 
Uh, but let's talk about the activity pub module. I'm not actually familiar with the, the Sesame Street platform that you talk about. <laughs> that, that was a joke, listeners. Let's talk about activity pub. <laughs> so I, I'm curious. So can you use this kind of um, in the way that I, I remember a blog post from a few years ago that Drees talked about moving a lot of his content back to his website. And that's one of the reasons why he posts a lot of his images there. Could you use this as a way to set up your own personal site to add your content like that and then have it move to Mastodon automatically? Um, or is it more for like a business, just like you post a blog and it posts a snippet to Mastodon? So I had originally found this module when I was looking for something like the, almost like the Mastodon equivalent of the the Twitter module, which is, is sort of that idea of you post, uh, let's say a blog post to your personal site and then it sends, you know, as you say, just the the meta information to a Mastodon server, and now that becomes part of you know the Fediverse where people can respond to it and and all of that. It would show up in their feeds. It sounds like it actually goes further because you know the Fediverse being, um, I would say, loose in terms of what things will constitute a server. Your Drupal site actually becomes the Mastodon server, so it's not actually oh. like sending notifications out to a different server where that be you know, becomes the place where people can react to it. Your your site actually becomes that that place as part of, let's say, the Mastodon network where, you know, people can receive notifications about things and so on. Okay. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to look into this. Definitely. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I haven't actually had a chance to try it out myself, but um, it, does sound, it does sound pretty cool. ActivityPub as a protocol is pretty pretty neat stuff. Um, so this is a, a good way for Drupal users to kind of backwards investigate ActivityPub itself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Do you know what else uses ActivityPub or is that? I mean, I've, as, as, as Martin alluded to, um, that's, you know, the basis protocol for, for Mastodon and Threads has promised and, and the Fediverse as we kind of currently talk about it, but, and Threads, the new Instagram app uh, has promised it would be compatible Mastodon in the future, and that would be through ActivityPub. Okay. Okay, so is it kind of like a new RSS? Uh... Well, no, so that, it's, it's a new protocol. So yeah, in that sense, okay. yes. Um, but it, it's, I wouldn't, uh, you know, it'll, you know, the comparisons between that and RSS can be really tricky. Um, it's a different way of thinking of things. And it is, you know, as, as Martin said, it's not, uh, you know, replicating content to another place. It is the server itself, um, cool. which is just a different way of thinking about things. Pretty great. Thanks, to, Wenzel. I'll to, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Um, I, I find it so fascinating on the internet in general, how the length of things are so extremely different. So like, for example, you mentioned that ActivityPub is relatively new and it's a new protocol, it, but it was created in 2018. So it's five years old. But then if you're talking about like a JavaScript framework, well, five years ago, most JavaScript frameworks have started, grown up, become the popular thing, and then retired. Uh, so a five-year-old JavaScript framework would be ancient at this point, but, you know, a new protocol, I mean, HTTP2, HTTP, RSS, you know, those, you know, those have been around, RSS has been around for what, 20 years or something, um, so much longer time frames. But yeah, I'm, I've not... Uh, done a deep dive into activity pub i'm gonna have to definitely check this out i've been looking for something like that but activity pub is a standard uh that's you know uh published by w3c so yeah. it's not just a startup little project either it's it is like a real you know foundational protocol yep. which i think is different than a lot of the other things absolutely yeah it's gonna be around for a while well thank you martin as always great module of the week and you've given me some more stuff to research <laughs> and look into <laughs> Uh, so looking forward to see what you have next week. Thanks, Nick. Have a good week. You too. Okay, moving on to our primary topic, uh, T2. Before we dive into what's happening at the Drupal Association, uh, let's introduce our audience to you. I think a lot of our audience probably first, uh, quote unquote, met you at DrupalCon, the most recent DrupalCon. Um, you've been the CEO of the DA for nine months now. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background? Sure. Um, as I as was, as you said in the beginning, I come to the DA. Um, I think two things are um, salient. 
first, uh, I, I come to the DA, uh, I didn't start my career in IT. I started my career in government uh, in not-for-profit management. Um, and so I worked for a number of U.S. federal government agencies. I worked for a number of associations in the Washington, D.C. area. That's where I am. Uh, and uh, But my most recent job, uh, previous to being at the Drupal Association, uh, was a public sector startup. And what that was was an association that created a, um, a company, effectively, to uh, develop an IT system that U.S. state agencies could use. Uh, I was there for about 16 years. Uh, we started with about, when I, when I was there, there were about 25 people at the association. Um, I was the second person on this project, uh, and we grew to about 120, 150 people uh, by the end. Um, uh, it started with building a system that initially served seven agencies, and then we grew that to, to 65 over the course of the 16 years. Um, and I say that that's where I got my IT chops, really, where I understood what it takes to build systems, uh, what it takes to um, uh, make users happy or try to, uh, what it takes to market, what it takes to deal with uh, uh, government agencies, et cetera. Um, that's one. I think second is that was not an open source project. We were really, it was sort of a SaaS offering that we were, uh, we were making to state agencies. Um, so I, I'm, I come to the DA without a deep, background in open source. Uh, I, of course, I know conceptually what open source was. We used open source products, uh, um, et cetera. Um, but uh, a lot of my learning I've had to do over the last nine months has been to really try to understand uh, you know, the level below the, the talking points of open source. What is open source really mean to the community? What is unique about the Drupal community, et cetera, to understand um, how effectively to lead the DA. So I think those, that's kind of a little bit more, maybe, maybe more information than you wanted, but uh, a little yep. bit of my background and two things I'm bringing to the table that I think are are unique a little bit. No, that's perfect. And before we move on, I'm actually curious, what what's kind of the biggest, maybe surprise is the wrong word, but biggest surprise going from somebody that, you know, previously used open source to becoming kind of a champion of open source? What's, what's the biggest thing that you found out there? You're like, oh, I didn't realize open source worked like that. Yeah, I think the biggest surprise, uh, and you know, one one caveat I should say up front, or maybe disclaimer, is um, I might be prone to put my foot in the mouth in my mouth. So oftentimes, not being well versed in open source, I might say something the wrong way. So I apologize up front if I offend people. Um, uh, but um, I think the the biggest su surprise to me or revelation that I did not during the interview process with the board, and they were very forthcoming. But I did not appreciate the distinction between the project and the association. Yeah. That we have a project that's running the product, if you will, and you have an association that has to support it. And I'm still not 100% comfortable that I have my arms around exactly how those two work together now and how they should work together. You know, what's the ideal relationship between the two? Um, obviously, where I came from, that what I would call that product function that product management function was housed also with the organization that was funding it supporting it um you know we're all in one shop uh so that's probably my biggest revelation that i'm i'm still wrestling with a little bit in terms of how best to proceed and i would just like to say our, our listeners probably already know this but you have to not worry about um, putting your foot in your mouth uh when in the room with me because i typically put my foot in my mouth all the time the, the um, trick is to get john to take it out of his mouth I know. <laughs> and just keep my mouth closed i, I don't know it's it, it's uh, not a skill that i've learned yet so with your, you know, your kind of like um, nonprofit government background, I'm kind of curious, like, why come to Drupal, right? So you had a little bit of IT in there, you had a lot of government, a lot of, a lot of open source. I'm wondering, like, what about like the, the job posting or the, the, you know, the application process was like, you know, to you was like, hey, I want to go lead the Drupal Association. Like, I don't really know a ton about this, but I'm going to, I'm going to, Bring what I got and and see see what happens. Yeah, no, great, uh, good question. Um, and uh, I've, that's a question I've asked myself throughout the process um, a lot. Uh, 
uh, you know, I think if I go back a year, it was about a year ago where I first uh, I had my first interview about around this time a year ago. And I had been at my previous position for about 16 years. Uh, this the system was mature, it was stable. Um, and I was ready. I was looking for like, what's my next, um, what's my next, uh, gig? What, what's the next thing I want to do? Um, and I think it was a, someone forwarded the Drupal association, um, position to me. And when I looked at the, um, the skill sets that the board was looking for, I checked off a lot of those. I said, oh, I do that. I do that. I do that. I can do that. Um, but I didn't know anything about Drupal itself. I wasn't a member of the Drupal community. I, I, I've never been a developer in Drupal, um, et cetera. So, it, uh, so I put my hat in the ring because um, uh, I was excited about the, the challenge that the board was laying out. Um, and the first few interviews were just to see if there was enough connection and, and between what they wanted and who, what I wanted, and there was. But as I got into talking specifically about their vision, I got really excited about it. Um, and I will say that, so I was looking, I was, I was ready for my next adventure kind of to, to jump, uh, to jump into something. Um, and I think it was a confluence of the board was also looking for some, someone that maybe brought a little bit outside the community perspective into, into the Drupal association. So it was just kind of like, I was ready to, to jump into something that I was hundred, like I had the, I had the skill set for, I believe but not the deep background in. Um, and the board was also looking for someone that maybe uh, would, would come in with, a, with uh, for a little bit from the outside. I don't want to put words in their mouth, um, but you know, a little bit from the outside. And it would just happen to, to work uh, that we're both looking for the same thing. Um, the other thing I did was I, I obviously during the process, I talked to as many of the community members as I could. And I will say that um, I, um, I talked to ones I knew, and then I got introduced to, you know, by them to other people. And the thing that I would note was the excitement that folks felt and the enthusiasm that folks felt about Drupal. And you don't, this might sound obvious to you all, but you don't get that with proprietary products in the same way. <laughs> um, and I thought, wow, because there was a community in my old system, a community of regulators and industry users. And we ran a conference and it was, I really loved that part of it. Um, and it was a good community because the regulators, you know, really work together very well. Um, but the Drupal community is like that 10 times, you know, uh, the excitement level, the size. Um, and I, that's what really attracted to me uh, to, to Drupal was you have this great community that has great enthusiasm. Uh, you have this association that the board has a very clear vision of where they want to go. And the challenge will be, you know, how do you lead the association and leverage that enthusiasm and, and excitement in the community. So uh, I think that's what really, for me, sealed the deal in terms of coming over was that talking to, to community members and the excitement and enthusiasm the folks had. You mentioned the outside perspective that you that you bring. Um, can you expand more upon that and just, you know, give us a sense of what what is you think that that's new and exciting about your approach? Sure. Um, I think the uh, the outside perspective. So when I, the last system that I built and ran, um, you know, we operated that like a business. And so, um, and I was used to being in associations where you, there's a business side to running an association. In fact, I think to be successful, you really have to be quite serious about that business side of running the association. Um, and uh, I think that's one thing that I, that I bring to the table that was maybe a little bit different is, bringing a business model, you know, trying to figure out what the Drupal Association's business model is for sustainability, you know, um, during the, uh, obviously during the pandemic, uh, the association's budget took a hit. It's heavily reliant on the DrupalCons. Um, the previous executive directors did very, from what I can see, did a very good job of making sure that the association was, uh, was viable and was going to continue as an ongoing entity. Um, we're out of the pandemic. Uh, I'm not announcing that officially. Other people have said that, not me. Um, so I'm not making an announcement about the pandemic here. I just, but we're we're coming out of it. And uh, um, and I think, but even you know, even a year ago when I was interviewing, uh, there was an interest in what will the association do for the next five years and the next ten years, and um, where what is and I think the fundamental issue is what is that business model that will 
sustain the association, not just for the sake of self-preservation, not just sustain it so it can be, but so it can, so it can enhance Drupal and it can enhance, and it can enhance the Drupal community. Um, so I think that kind of really business mindset of, um, of, of developing a business model and pursuing it is one of the outside perspectives that I bring. Do you think prior to your involvement that the, um, you know, the Drupal Association was kind of kind of lacking, you know, that that sort of business business type plan or, or a more robust business type plan? What I came into, what I, what I, what I found when I arrived was, and during the interview process, the board had a very clear vision of where they wanted to go. Um, but, uh, in, but, and they had talked about it and then I kind of put it on ice a little bit with the pandemic because we had to kind of go into just survival mode. And now they were ready to start working on it. And you'll see that in the strategic plan. Um, but the DA itself had not begun to really absorb that, you know, that uh, as an organization, what that strategic plan looks like, and then to be able to plan for that. And that takes, that takes time. Um, I think the other thing I was in, again, I'm coming to this um, from the outside, uh, you know, the association was started originally, I understand, uh, um, and Dries, in the Dries note in, in Pittsburgh had a really good uh, 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 presentation on this about the original, you know, was a place to kind of, be a bank account for the Drupal project, you know, to hold money. And then it was, okay, we need to run these events, you know, and it builds up. And, and now I think the future has to be off of, yes, we're doing those things, but it has to be more than that. Um, so, um, you know, I want to characterize this as, as, you know, previously lacking, but I think there's a new vision that now requires a, a different organization to move it forward. I mean, I think we'd all agree, right? Like the DA kind of feels like it was originally started. And, and this is in by, by no means in like a uh, critique of the DA, right? But it's like, it was very much started at, like by like software engineers, like open source software engineers, right? To support kind of what they were doing, right? And, and right. Uh, you know, now it feels with, with you coming in and the board kind of working on this plan, which we'll, we'll talk about that like where, um, I don't know, for lack of better terms, putting on our big boy pants and like seeing that we need kind of like the business alignment to support the financial alignment to support the open source product, right? Right, right. No, I think that's, that's a, a I think that's a fair way to characterize it. Um, and uh, it, you know, what I expect in, in a few years is for the DA to be different than, than it has been in the past. And I think the board wants that too. So we, we've mentioned the strategic plan a couple of times now uh, and teased it a bit. And it sounds like you just kind of finalized what I assume would be kind of the first iteration of that. Can you can you talk about what the strategic plan is now for the DA? What, what does that look like? Sure. Uh, so the this is a plan that I've been working on with the board since January. Uh, and we did approve it. We had an open board meeting at um, in Pittsburgh at DrupalCon and it was approved. Uh, and now we're in the process of making it pretty and we'll be posting on the website uh, here in the next week or two and um, provide and then providing ongoing updates to uh, the community about our progress for uh, um, for implementing it. So the, the Drupal Association strategic plan is a three year plan. It lays out um, objectives that we want to achieve in three years. Uh, and those objectives revolve around three things. One is innovation of the Drupal, what I would call the Drupal product, innovation of Drupal. Two is marketing um, and specifically getting the Drupal brand out there to the general public and, and uh, end users so that it is as common as other uh, CMSs and other uh, uh, software programs. Uh, and then lastly is fundraising. Um, and I can talk a little bit more in detail that that really is, is I would say twofold. Uh, we are um, uh, we're looking at the business model of how the association should run itself from a revenue perspective and be sustainable. Uh, but we also we just hired a director of philanthropy, and we'll be venturing into um, uh, seeking uh, philanthropic support uh, that can help fund a lot of the initiatives that the community is looking for. Um, I can go into a lot more detail on each one. Uh, um, let me just start with innovation. 
uh, and and you guys interrupt me or cut me off or put me on mute if I you know if I go too long. Um, innovation, I think we just came off of a uh, DrupalCon initiative called Pitchburg. You might have heard of it, uh, yep. where we raised some funds uh, and then we went through a uh, a contest of sorts, if you will, which culminated in a panel of judges. Martin was on that on that panel myself. Uh, that selected of about uh, about um, 25 submissions, we got it down to seven, and then we had the audience vote at Pittsburgh on, to, to fund uh, the top ones. Um, that was really um, a, a, a kind of a way to kick off this focus on innovation. What we're looking, what the innovation we're looking for is uh, to really make Drupal the most innovative and impactful web platform in the world. Um, we'll be focusing on makers, uh, meaning uh, part of our business model, if you will, will be really, if you're a maker, how does the Drupal Association really support you? Um, and if you're not a maker, how do we get you to be a maker? And if you're not willing to be a maker, then let's not spend a lot of time on, on that. Um, uh, and then second is to coordinate with like-minded projects that support the open web. So I think the ways we can innovate is how do we coordinate with other, other products, um, uh, uh, other so open source software, Modic, others that are already um, yeah. uh, being used in conjunction with Drupal. But how do we innovate one as a product, but then two in coordination with uh, with other um, softwares? Yeah, and, and and I think there's multiple ways that that type of coordination can happen. Right, one is um, you know utilizing a, a big initiative Drupal eight was moving to Symphony, right, and utilizing and giving back to a product that other communities use as well. Um, I think another example from the Pittsburgh was, I think when the WordPress team found out about some of the Gutenberg initiatives, I think they stepped up and, and provided significant resources and dev, uh, uh, some development resources as well. And so that, you know, certainly helps. Um, and then there's also yeah. things like uh, the activity sub that we talked about today, like just giving feedback on or implementing different uh specs for different things helps bring awareness um so yeah there's a lot of ways that you can do that as well as direct drupal enhancements like layout builder or views or you know you know composure that kind of stuff right right you know we looked at and i'll tell you on in the innovation piece and um we looked at uh how we want to innovate and um the right now there are contributions strategic contributions to going to um to drupal every year and we we track the contributions we categorize them or which are strategic and which are not strategic if you will um and we, we we continue to see growth of even strategic contributions um and so our goal is to the trajectory is to um is to increase the slope of that growth if you will you know we want to see a threefold increase in what we call strategic contributions to Drupal by 2025. And you, you mentioned Gutenberg uh, or those initiatives out of Pittsburgh. Um, there, will, there will have to be a process by which we say, which are the strategic or the use of symphony, you know, the, or the inclusion of symphony. Those were, in my opinion, um, strategic decisions that were made at some point. Um, and so there'll be a process of, of deciding which are the strategic initiatives and then how do we funnel um, uh, developers and companies that want to sponsor developers, their activities, how do we channel those to the strategic initiatives that we're, uh, that we want to undertake? Um, and that's, you know, that's how we hope to achieve the three year, um, uh, the threefold increase in strategic contributions by 2025. So can we talk a little, a little bit? So like, obviously like Drupal is a, um, you know, Drupal is is a code base. Drupal is a product. Drupal is an open source open source uh, software that we all use and love, right? I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit, um, you know, kind of as we're talking about the strategic plan, talk a little bit about kind of like Drupal as the the software and the DA and like some of or at least what the the most important you know, strategic advantage is that's, that's maybe not code related, like not, hey, we need to add this feature or hey, we need to innovate in this way. Like, is there some kind of like non-code strategic advantage that, that the, uh, the strategic, uh, the, that the plan kind of 
brings to the table? I'm assuming it does. Yeah, so um, if not, yes. So part of our, under our innovation objective, so in addition to trying to find a threefold increase um, in, um, in contributions that are strategic, uh, we want to double the number of certified partners. So we have a Drupal certified partner program. Uh, these are companies that uh, contribute code. They, you know, they have to meet certain criteria. We want to enhance that to really double down on the makers. Uh, we want to take um, uh, it's less it, it's less about the financial contributions that these companies make, and it's more about the code or other contributions that they make. So it doesn't just have to be code. Um, they can do other things. As you know, they can do other things to contribute to the community and to the project. Um, and so we'll, we're, um, we'll be rolling out an enhanced Drupal certified partner program that really, uh, in my opinion, de-emphasizes the financial contributions and emphasizes the uh, uh, code and community contributions. And then lastly, we wanna see, um, we want to see young fo folks coming into Drupal and particularly in leadership positions. So we have a goal of, of in 2025, 25% of, of those in leadership positions in the Drupal project and the Drupal community uh, are new to, to their leadership positions. Um, part of that will be uh, training and onboarding of folks, getting them into the community. So there's a lot of work that you know, we have um, under each objective under the innovation objective, we started brainstorming what are some um, strategies or initiatives that we can undertake. Um, and there'll be, uh, you know, a focus will be how do we train, how do we, how do we onboard, bring people into the community, and especially focus on young folks. I mean, people, you know, in my mind, under 25, under 22, um, how do we get young people? One of my board members said it very well. I said, if we can, you know, this person got into Drupal because they had a problem to solve. They taught Drupal, they taught themselves Drupal because it helped them solve the problem. How do we get that motivation going where, uh, and I, I see that I have a son in college who's um, through no fault of mine studying you know, IT. Um, and I'm like, you know, Ethan, how do we get, how do we get you excited about Drupal? Like, what would it take? And it's, it's this interesting idea of start with a problem to solve and have them solve problems. And then they'll, they'll teach themselves whatever tool they need, you know, to, to get there. Like, yes. So there's going to be a focus on, on training and bringing people in that I think, I think John speaks to your question about, you know, beyond code contributions, what are the other innovations or projects that we're doing? So if I had to kind of distill that, distill that down, right. Into like two, two points or three points, like it sounds to me like one is, um, greater involvement from folks that are currently outside the community focusing more on you know the younger the younger set of folks right mm -hmm. and then two i think it, it sounds like um you know uh, and, and this is true of of any nonprofit though but like funding and 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 raising funds to support support these these things is that pretty accurate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I would you know that's our third objective which is the fundraising one and i said that's it's both looking at our, our, um, you know, our business model as an association. And I come from a pretty traditional association world and the Drupal association is not, uh, is not a traditional association in that way. So I will probably bring in some, some, some things that will be very traditional. Other things won't apply. Um, but so look at that business model. And then that, um, uh, as I said, we just hired uh, Julia Cranstor, who's our new director of philanthropy. She just started, um, last week, actually, a week ago. And um, uh, our goal is to triple our budget in three years. So we want to take the Drupal Association budget, we're about three and a half to 4 million now, we want to go up to, to 10, 11. Um, that will allow, you know, that is money that will allow us to do a lot more in the community uh, and in, in supporting developers and supporting the community initiatives that, that folks are asking us to support. I want to jump in. You mentioned, uh, you know, getting people, younger people, continuing their contributions to Drupal and the momentum within the Drupal community. Um, I just wanted to share an anecdote from Pitch, uh, Pittsburgh. You know, I have a, a couple of teammates uh, at Acquia who are un under 25. And one of them was at DrupalCon and it was their first DrupalCon. And they did remark after the fact, they were pleasantly surprised at the, you know, the age demographics they saw. Um, they were expecting it to be much 
skewed much older than what they they saw, oh, okay. and they were they were very pleased about it. So not saying we we don't have more work to do, That's great. but um, I, I also you know I I was pleasantly surprised coming out of the pandemic, having missed several Drupal cons. I mean, I started going to Drupal cons when I was under twenty five, and um, so sufficiently not now. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share that that aspect. Um, one thing you did say you mentioned. Uh, you know, getting a, a commitment to getting people into leadership roles. I'm curious how you're defining those, um, since a lot of the Drupal community has sort of, you know, not poorly defined, but undefined uh, what it means to be a leader. Right. So uh, that's part of the process we're going through now. Um, and part of my learning and uh, what I've had to learn in Drupal is like, why isn't it clear, who's, you know, what's a leadership position? Yeah. So we're identifying uh, you know, I've asked Tim Lennon and others in, in, to say, okay, well, if you listed out the community leadership roles, you know, what are they, you know, and, 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 and to try to define that. So we, we have a working list, which I don't have top of mind here, sure. but working list of, I think we came up with like 38 or 40 roles that we say are leadership roles in the, um, you know, in, in the project and the association. And, um, but that will vet that with folks and say, you know, do we get this right? Um, and then actively seek to, uh, I've heard two things. One is I, I started saying what, one thing that attracted me to Drupal was the enthusiasm and excitement. And that's true. Um, on the other side of that, I've heard of some burnout. People, you know, people are, some people are feel burned out from kind of having to carry the water a lot. So I think getting, um, I'm not sure that how extensive that is or not, but um, uh, getting, uh, seeing about 25% turnover in those four, let's say those 40, 38, 40 positions, uh, not just turnover for turnover sake, but as people kind of, you know, want to retire a little bit or take a break from, uh, from all this work, um, are we actively not going back to the same people, but actually getting people that had never been and bringing a new perspective in, uh, into those roles. Um, and so we, we, you know, we will have to publish our list of what we think are the are the community leaders, and then ask folks to kind of weigh in on that. Um, we probably won't get super technical on this because it's it's a more of a thematic goal. Like, yes, we have a number to it, one twenty five percent. That would be ten or twelve. Um, but the theme is: do we have people in leadership positions that haven't been there before that are bringing in new ideas? You know, I think that's great. Thank you. Yeah, this this all sounds like super super duper interesting to me. Um, one thing that going back to your your previous point about like getting you know younger folks, college college age folks, uh, which I guess can be a wide variety of ages these days, but getting folks from from you know uh, colleges excited about Drupal, like as somebody who um, was an adjunct edu edu educator for a while, like and tried to get Drupal into a classroom like I, I can understand the challenges there but it kind of kind of excites me to try to like figure out how we do that and and like who's had success with it um because I do feel like that's a that's an avenue for everybody to rise right like the Drupal Association gets younger folks interested in Drupal companies get more um specialized folks coming out of college that they can hire right and I think like that's that's the biggest one of the bigger issues I see from like a, a company and agency standpoint is like when you have a new hire, like right out of college, right? They don't have mm -hmm. a lot of Drupal specific knowledge, right? And that it takes a lot to either, you either have to invest in that person and ramp them up or you have to, um, you know, you have to just understand like, hey, we're going to bring this person on and like, we're going to, we're going to educate them through their time here as to what we need them to know. But like, you know, I think it's, it's an interesting way of, of getting, you know, building the community is to, uh, to, to get them, you know, more at a, at a college level. Um, and then like the leadership roles, you know, uh, are, you know, paths into leadership roles are interesting to me. Um, you talked about burnout and I think, you know, I think everybody on this call has probably seen it one one time or another, right? A module maintainer, um, Tim. For those audio listeners, Tim is laughing because he's he's got his hands into a lot of things, and at <laughs> some point, I'm sure he's probably um, been burnt out. Um, but yeah. um, you know, I think like how do we how do we develop processes to hand those things over or to um, bring new people on that are excited about initiatives and, and leading these things to, to, to alleviate that? Um, I think those are, you know, two really important, important aspects here. Yeah. And I would, I 
uh, have a couple of thoughts on that in that. And hopefully as we go through the uh, laying out our strategic plan, our initiatives, more meat on the bones. But, you know, there's a traditional route, which is, you know, as you said, kind of let's get a university course on Drupal and try to get kids, college kids in there and move it. I'm not sure that's going to work in the same way in the U.S. that um, uh, that we'd want it to. Um, so I think getting universities involved uh, is important. How do we do that? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I go back to what I said earlier about yeah. um, I think young people will self will teach themselves a lot of things. You know, if there's a problem to solve or a challenge or something to overcome and, you know, laying out a huge program that then we try to funnel people through might be harder than to giving folks a problem, having Drupal as a solution and having them uh, um, activate on that. Exactly how, that, how we do that, I'm not sure. Um, the other thing I'd point, uh, another interesting idea um, in the Pittsburgh, and we by, um, we posted all the Pittsburgh entries, so not just the ones that were that received funding, but we posted all the videos. Uh, the Debug Academy had a very interesting concept where they would get folks, um, uh, put them through a training program, and then with graduate them with experience, if you will. Um, and so uh, they weren't just putting through a training program and then putting them out on their own. Um, so I think there's interesting, what I would call quote unquote non traditional ideas out there that you know the the Drupal Association would like to be able to be a part of or spur to get to get young people in in the Drupal and kind of up and continue to climb the Drupal expertise ladder, if you will. So, so if we're talking about non traditional, I'm I'm curious what your thoughts are on the Drupal Cinematic Universe. Um, maybe, maybe we start with a, a, a Drupal comic and then you know move into a TV show and then a multi multi year. <laughs> <laughs> movie well yeah boy see you're you're stretching my knowledge of what uh, <laughs> the uh you know if we could if we could replicate marvel i think yeah. you know if we could make the marvel uh drupal can become like marvel i think we'd have a good 20-year run you know yeah the, the, the drupal con needs to become the next superhero um that's right <laughs> well, that's all the drop. Cheek, obviously but <laughs> the drop yeah but um I'm curious about some of the other the other aspects. So, you know, I, th I think you've got a pretty good handle on this. But one of the things that you know developers really say is, if you don't measure something, it hasn't happened, right? So, if you you can set all these initiatives, you can have all these great ideas. If you don't measure it, you know, you can't um, you, you can't know if you, whether you've achieved it or not. And it sounds like the strategic initiative really um, has those goals in mind that are measurable. Like you mentioned the budget, you're looking to triple that, yeah. you're looking to increase yeah. uh, leadership roles, things like that. But uh, what what's your plan for, um, I, I guess, tracking that and exposing that information? Is that something, you know, are we going to have to wait to DrupalCon to find that information out? Or are we going to have to wait for the annual report? Or or is that information going to be kind of in the open and some of that people can, can contribute to? Oh, uh, yes, that will be in the open. Um, it will be uh, by uh, we have nailed that is part of what we're trying to nail down before we publish. Um, I haven't nailed down the exact cadence of updates, but what I envision is regular updates, not waiting for DrupalCon. Um, somewhere on on uh, d.org, you can see the strategic plan for every. So we have we have the three objectives: innovation, marketing, and fundraising. For each of those, we have two to three measures, which are numeric. One of the things I'm pretty a stickler for is and i do agree if you know it's hard to uh, if you can't you know it's hard to be to know you're being successful you can't measure right um yeah and so so there'll be numbers so tripling strategic contributions 25 percent new leaders uh in drupal and and doubling the number of certified partners um for the fundraising campaign i mentioned uh the the tripling of our budget so there's dollars there that you can track uh, there's numbers uh, for the marketing objective, um, we're you know looking at uh, uh, built with or other tools that allow us to say how many sites uh, are on Drupal. So, okay. uh, and, but we're and it's not just the raw number of sites, right? Uh, Dries talks about Drupal being for ambitious site builders. So there's you know if you look at the top million sites, um, Drupal makes up I think two and a half percent of the top million sites in, in terms of volume traffic. Um, yep. If you look at the top ten thousand, we make up eight uh, percent. So, so you can see that as, as the sites get more robust, Drupal becomes a larger share. So we we will have actual numbers that we can look at to say how are we doing against uh, against these objectives. Um, and and my goal is 
probably on a quarterly basis. I don't want to commit to that right now, but on a quarterly basis, monthly probably is too much, too too often to be updating, um, but quarterly um, to, so we can measure progress and uh, and see. And I would like to make that, and it's definitely one thing that is, so my previous job, I was with bank regulators and bank regulators are two things, conservative and, uh, you know, bank regulations kind of uh, behind closed doors often. Uh, one of the big changes coming to the open source, everything's out in the open and the community has a strong preference for everything being out in the open, you know? And so um, I've, I've, I've drunk that Kool-Aid definitely in my, and the staff at the DA make sure that I keep drinking it. So uh, it, yeah, it'll be on D.org and we'll try to be as transparent as possible on just getting numbers out, the good and the bad. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, one of the advantages of that approach too is if somebody cares about or is passionate about a particular objective that you're going for and sees that's lagging behind a little bit, that can you know, motivate them to, to take part. Uh, or even if it's not lagging behind and they're just passionate about it, seeing like, if you don't know what's going on, it's hard to participate. Um, and you know, the, the truth is as welcoming as the community is and as helpful as the community is, you know, contributing to core, contributing to these types of initiatives is daunting, right? It is, it is a little intimidating, but if you, if you get exposed to that type of information and, and get introduced to those pathways more often, then people are more likely to, to make that leap. Right. If they just, I think if people just hear about these initiatives once a year, they feel like, oh, they don't, they don't need my help. But if you hear about it more often, um, more organically, then, then people will start to feel like they can participate too, which is, you know, obviously one of the goals. Right. Right. And I think, I, I think that's, I've even experienced that dynamic to date. And, and Tim Lennon, you know, reminds me that, you know, there, if the, the community is so large that, you know, when, when someone in the community or, you know, when there's an initiative out there that catches fire, there could be, you know, hundreds or thousands of people interested, throwing in ideas, supporting it, you know, which is very different than a, a you know, a closed system or a proprietary product where you, you're only dealing with the small circle of folks that, that, that work on that. Um, uh, and so that, that's the, uh, you know, the, the, the plus, the, the upside of, being open the downside of course is you have a thousand opinions you know you have to yeah. sit through but the upside is you can activate a lot more people quickly if if your ideas you know take hold yeah and and, and specifically yeah. one of the things i was thinking about it related to the pittsburgh stuff which is one of the strategic initiatives one is you know pittsburgh was great i really enjoyed watching it i enjoyed the selection process i think people generally selected the ones that I would have selected. I wasn't at DrupalCon, so I didn't get a chance to vote. But, you know, I, I have thoughts and opinions about it. And, and obviously, I, you know, I, I know kind of where I stand in the community. So I can't, you know, there's no way to say like, this is the way I should go. But I have, I have thoughts and opinions about how Gutenberg should be implemented. I've used Gutenberg and WordPress. <clears throat> I have fairly strong opinions about how it's implemented in certain ways. And, you know, one of the things, one of my questions coming out of DrupalCon was how and where do I provide my thoughts, whether people read them and take those, you know, that that's up to the community to decide, but wh where do I put that? Is there an issue queue for that? And obviously a lot of these have individual project issue queues, so I can go there, but, you know, since it's something that's run by the DA, having like a feedback loop for that kind of stuff, once something is funded, I think would be, would be interesting too. Um, yeah. Um, so we recently hired Alex Moreno, uh, okay. who came on, uh, on the staff, uh, back in it was April. Um, and he's going to be leading a lot of our innovation efforts, and he's the one okay. leading Pittsburgh. Um, and but to your point, we were just having a conversation a month ago, and I said, "Hey, how do we want to track these things?" And I had a very specific idea in my head about how we track these projects um, and and so forth. And he said, "No, we're just going to do it on d.org, and we're going to put everything out there on d.org." And yeah. again, my history, you know, I got, I got a little reactionary. I said, "Whoa, whoa, that's going to be too public," and then you know. He, uh, he kind of said, no, no, this is a good way. This is the way people can give feedback and the community's used to it. And da, 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 da. So again, I'm a lot to learn and I'm learning it. Um, uh, so I think you will see that's a, uh, Alex rightfully has anticipated your comments and uh, you know, we will be of the seven, uh, six projects that we're funding, they will be managed on d.org like any other project. Uh, awesome. And you will have the ability to have insight into it. You know, our interest is to make sure that the projects move and get done because yeah. you know we're the funnel of these dollars um but then you know the the ability to have the community 
be aware of progress and weigh in on it, I think is, is valuable. Um, and and a, last thing I'll say on the Pittsburgh idea, that was a way of making a splash and getting focused on innovation. Whether that's a long-term model for how do we channel uh, organizations with dollars that are willing to invest to people with ideas, it, you know, that may not be the long-term model at all. There may be something different, um, but that's what we're trying to achieve. We, you know, we had folks that had resources or, and wanted to spur innovation, and we had folks that had ideas and, and needed funding or whatever to help make those ideas real. Um, and that's the role that we want the DA to play increasingly going forward to be this kind of channeler of resources to individuals or to companies, you know, however it goes. So I don't want, I know, you know, there's a, I thought Pittsburgh was a great splash to get attention. Yeah. I just want folks to realize that's probably not the long-term model. You know, we're not gonna have a, we probably won't have a Pittsburgh at every single DrupalCon and that's the only way we fund innovation. But there will be some variation on that theme where, where people get to vote and select where the DA acts as a channeler of resources. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier, you alluded to the kind of unique relationship that the DA has with the software project itself and the community, um, and 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 sort of how you're, you know, less currently uh, hands off in terms of like directing code and development and whatnot. Um, but when you think of the project itself versus uh, the community, you know, how do you? How do you uh, differentiate between those two, and how do you approach them? So that's that's probably the area I still have a lot to learn on, a lot to learn about. Um, but uh, you know, my my thinking is that going forward, for the Drupal Association to truly support the project and the community effectively, uh, the Drupal Association needs to be, um, uh, you know. In, uh, as close to the project leads and leaders, you know, the core con contributors, Teresa, Teresa is on my board, so we're very close in that way. Um, but, but there needs to be more just uh, uh, the association working hand in glove with the core committers and others on the project. Exactly what that looks like, I'm not sure. Um, and, but it's uh, it's one of the issues we had with, with Pittsburgh was we had some of the folks that we were uh, were selected to be funded, and their question is, well, if we do this, how do we know it gets committed in the core, if it's appropriate to be committed in the core? And I said, that's a great, that's a question that we, not the DA, but we, meaning the DA, the project, the community have to answer because that's, that's a fundamental question. We fund it, we'll get in. Um, uh, so I, I think the future will be the association a lot more working hand in glove with the project and being more um, involved in the project, at least from a, a seat at the table, listening, understanding what's going on. Well, and, the other follow up to that is sort of the differentiation between contrib and core, right? So with uh, initiatives like Project Browser, which are still underway, um, you know, part of the goal of that is to kind of elevate contrib and give it some more access and visibility. Uh, because right now it's, you know, 50,000 modules and it's like, good luck finding the right one. And if you have a new idea, good luck getting that one found by people uh, from both directions. But with regard to core and and in, in what you just said with Pittsburgh, you know, not all of those things have to be in core. A lot of people want things to be in core. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the core committers also need to be involved in that discussion as well. And not just because it gets funded doesn't mean it's going in. Um, so I guess my, you know, my question is uh, what any thoughts on sort of the prominence of contrib or just not making sure you know i'm a core developer i'm fairly biased myself but how do we prevent core from kind of taking over that's a that's a great question i mean that's a great question and and you know i want to be clear like my comments when folks ask me it does have to go into core that should not be i mean certainly not my decision and not the da's decision on like oh yeah this has to go into core that's kind of the strategic decision someone has to decide that if it's appropriate if it's necessary um, um and i uh fully support your point on, you know, elevating uh, con contributions. Um, I think that's the, and, and that's an area that I would, you know, Tim, Tim Lennon on our staff, our CTO um, and his team should be involved in how the DA responds to that or, or gets involved in that. I don't, uh, you've definitely reached my limit of understanding the technical nuances and, you know, in terms of what's the best approach on, on uh, elevating country and, and core and so forth. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of <clears throat> back off of answering that question, just but fall back to saying, hey, I, I still think that there needs to be greater uh, um, involvement and, and kind of hand in glove working between the DA and and the project. Yeah, I think I, I think one thing I, that I really learned 
based on the discussions we've had with a couple of core maintainers over the last year is a lot, a lot of that, a lot of stuff in Drupal is community led, but I think the core question really lies with the core maintainers, right? It's because if, if something is not going to be in core, that's the core maintainers decision, but the community can still support it. <laughs> just to, it, that just goes in contrib, right? Um, because there's only so many core maintainers and they can only support what they can support. We, you know, as a community, we can't, um, we can't force that responsibility on, on core maintainers that are already on some level overloaded, right? If, if something's important for the community, important for the project, but can't be supported by the core team, well, that just needs to be supported in, in contrib. And there's a lot of stuff that does that already, right? Commerce is something that, you know, even if, you know, Centaro wanted to become core maintainers and support that in core, I don't, I don't know that that should be in, in core, that it, 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 it shouldn't be. Right. As, as a lover of commerce, you're not going to get any complaints from me. Like, I personally am a, a big fan of a smaller core. Um, yeah. And and I think like you know, we have to be smart about and we he's like the royal we here, right? Um, we have to be smart about how we how we grow core. And I think that's kind of what what I'm hearing yeah. here. But um, yeah, I agree. I agree with you there, Nick. The uh, okay. recent announcement of the newest uh, product manager of Drupal Core, Larry Escala, is uh, kind of a big uh, change, I think, and direction and focus for Core. Uh, I think he's going to be thinking very strategically. I know he is thinking very strategically about, you know, what it means, what Core means, and what uh, it means to our users, and what it should, how it should exist, and what it should embody in terms of, you know, product vision. So I foresee a lot more clarity on that uh, forthcoming. So I think like what I'm what I'm hearing here, and and the Tims can can confirm or deny this, right? Is that like the DA kind of understands, right, where it kind of comes down as far as like it's not trying to make code decisions, like that's not that's outside of its purview, right? It's there to support and and enable the ability for the right people to make those those decisions, right? Yeah, that's exactly uh, that's exactly what I'm what I'm thinking uh, in terms of you know we want to be a channeler of resources to to con contrib and so we want you know we need to be uh, aware understand we need to know what the strategic you know lorries or whoever you know the strategic visions is uh, um, but but not to be the decision maker uh, in that regard at all. An, an enabler, if you will, of of the yeah. uh, of the the you know technical strategic path, right? Yeah, yeah. So, go ahead. No, I was going to say because the one you know the one objective uh, that we talked a little bit about, but where I see it tied into this is the marketing. So we want to market. We want to have a an independent marketing. Like, you know, Drupal is marketed right now through the, a lot of companies that that use Drupal and provide services. Uh, the board very clearly wants the Drupal Association to get into marketing just Drupal itself as a, as a product, if you will, um, you know, in the same way that other uh, uh, private label companies do. Um, it, I, I see it's tied together because uh, those are the, um, uh, you know, it's through marketing that you can understand what end users are looking for. So as we are out marketing and we get information like, hey, you know, they like having you know, four different layout builder options, or they don't, I, you know, I'm beyond my expertise in here, but you know, or they're really looking for something simpler or something, you know, do we have a place to, to transmit that information back to so that um, uh, the folks that should be making those decisions can, can kind of weigh that, that marketing piece, you know, the, the information we're receiving from marketing. Yeah. So I think I, I, this kind of dovetails into my next, my next question, because you know, that makes complete sense to me. Like I think Drupal, the Drupal project, right, needs to have that that um, partner, right, to be able to market it, to be able to fundraise for it, to be able to provide that vision of a of a product that people can use and, and, and you know, and support, right? And I think for some people, like that feels a little bit like icky, like, oh, marketing, no, it needs to be open source. It needs, but like, I think it's, it's a, and this is my, my thinking here, not anybody else's, but like, I, you know, I, I think it, it, it needs that, that 
spin or it needs that positioning in order for it to succeed into the future, right? Um, so right. my question here is actually a two-parter and like putting on our, our ability to see into the future goggles, right? Um, T2, I wonder like where you see kind of the DA in, in like five years, right? Yeah, um, so uh, I think the DA in five years will be, let me, let me, let me list some attributes. I think, I think it'll be larger, you know, in terms of uh, probably staff, but really capacity to execute. Um, there'll be, uh, it, it'll be uh, closer to the project. Um, and um, I think, and meaning just more involved uh, with, with the project, if you will, on a kind of a day-to-day -day basis than it is today. Um, I think it will uh, be, um, or we have a diversity of funding. So we rely heavily right now on DrupalCon for funding a lot of the initiatives, for funding the, the association activities and initiatives. Um, clearly, that's not sustainable long-term. Uh, we don't know what the future of in-person conferences are. Personally, I think they will come back and they, they will be a, an important part of, of uh, communities innovating. But from a cash flow perspective, we don't know what the, what the future holds. Um, I think we'll we will, um, but I hope we are uh, self sustaining in our funding and not relying on just one or two major funding sources. So the the philanthropic efforts, I think, will be a lot more uh, aggressive in getting funding from sources that are have shared values with the association, the community, and are funding some initiatives. Um, you know, the, the perennial problem with open source or not problem, but the perennial issue is how do you, you know, it's, you can't sell the license. So how do you raise money for maintenance and, and ongoing? Um, and solving that will be, uh, you know, is, is a priority. Um, I think so closer to the project, um, larger, and then I think I hope more global. And one of the things, so I've talked to the CEOs of our partners, not all of them, I'm about halfway through the list. Um, and, uh, you know, I've heard from a few of them that, you know, we're a U.S. based not for profit. Obviously, the U.S. Is a, lar is a large market, um, but maybe we're too U.S. focused. And so I hope that in five years it is perceived as being much more of a global organization representing, you know, troopless around the world um, and not just, you know, and not that we're you know, not, I know that may be in some quarters an unfair criticism of the Drupal Association, but I hope in five years that it's really seen as, as global. That it's really seen as um um, you know, serving the needs of folks in India and uh, Vietnam and Australia, you know, uh, equally. Um, uh, and then I think uh, lastly is, is um, I alluded to this, is the, you know, it's really sustainable um, funding model uh, that, that, you know, we're not, uh, right now our budget's pretty lean. Uh, we do a lot with the little that we have, um, but we need, to, we need to just be much more um, sustainable and not every year kind of figuring out what we can do and what we can't do. Um, so that's kind of where I see in five years um, the Drupal Association being. So I think that sounds that sounds all very positive and like very um, you know good I mean lack of a better word right it sounds it sounds great and it sounds like a great place for the DA to be to be in so uh, I'll now shift to the um, second part of my question, which is kind of like the doomsday, the doomsday question. So everybody brace yourselves. And I perish to think, but like, let's fast forward 10 years or 20 years into the future. Um, do, do we think that, you know, Drupal is still around and they're uh, by in that, that the DA is still around in, you know, 10 or 20 years? Okay, so this is a dangerous question to ask the CEO of the association to answer. Uh, less than a year into into their term, <laughs> with board members uh, possibly listening. <laughs> um, so I think everyone on the phone, everyone on the call today, should have to answer this question, not just me. But joking aside, um, that's I think that is the that is the question. I feel like the uh, the easy answer is say yes, it will be. You know, optimistic. But technology is changing. Will will CMSs be CMSs in twenty years? Um, will will it morph to something you know else? Um, clearly, the way I look at it, Drupal is twenty years old now. I think there is a, a bit of an inflection point 
with the community, not just the association, but the community and the software for the, what's going to make it viable for the next 20 years. And, um, you know, where is the demand from end users? Where, what are they seeking and what will they need? Um, yeah. So, I, you know, if I was going to predict uh, 20 years is a long, I mean, it's amazing Drupal's here now, you know, but 20 years is a long time. And so in some ways, I think it will probably look very different. And um, it may be the Drupal Association, it may be something that is much more of a conglomerate, the association may be a conglomeration of a lot of open source. Uh, yeah. it, you know, maybe beyond just a CMS, it may, maybe there's a DXP kind of thing. Um, mm. uh, you know, that, that the market, I think the market drives where, you know, where they're going. Um, uh, so I would say if I had to predict the risk of my job, um, I would say yes, but it would be very different. And it may not be called Drupal, maybe called something else. I, I think the other side of that coin too is there's still Drupal six sites out there. <laughs> there's going to be Drupal sites in 20 years, and some of them will probably still be Drupal six. But um, yeah, you know, the, you know, the question is about the community: how how thriving is it going to be, and how? And I, and I think that's part of the these strategic initiatives, right? If the community is fed, if the community in the project is fed, and they're tended to, and as you mentioned, inflection points, you know, the the changes in direction that are needed are made. Yes, it'll be around. It might be different, but it'll be around. If mm -hmm. if we, as a community as a whole, decide to bury our heads in the sand and be like, "Well, the way we've done things has been successful until now. We're just going to keep doing it that way." Well, for long term, you know, 10, 20 year longevity type things, that's very dangerous, right? Experimenting, doing different things on an individual project, of course they can fail or they can be the wrong decision. But if you don't innovate, you don't make the attempt things, then long -term, the long-term health of the project will will fail. Um, so, I, I was just gonna say it. And, that, and that's one of the things that's really encouraging, even though it's been such a short short time, seeing the push for an innovation um, as kind of like, I mean, because the Drupal community has always innovated. <laughs> But you know, seeing the push and the actual like discussion and measurement of it is is encouraging for for the long term. So yeah, I was just gonna say like Tim, I know that that was a difficult question to to answer, and I appreciate your answer. Um, you know, I think like from from my standpoint, like I I agree, I agree a hundred percent with with what you said. I think based on what you what your you know your five year outlook is right. And the fact that we we actually just saw big changes in Drupal, right? So the the you know move from Drupal seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to ten, right, um, is is pushing people into a, um, in my opinion, again, my opinion, a, a new type of Drupal, right? Where Drupal isn't necessarily like a content management system in the traditional sense, right? It's becoming a um, a unifying tool for four systems, right? And when I describe Drupal to clients, like in a lot of these kind of like big corporate headless architectures, I'm describing it as kind of the glue that brings all of the systems together, right? The traffic cop that um, kind of manages content, but also kind of shares content between between disparate systems. And I think like that's where Drupal's shifting to um, from like not just a content management system, but like a, a, a um, you know, I don't want to say service manager, but like m more of the glue that brings these systems together. And I think, you know, we've seen Drupal shift in the last couple of years from from that kind of like standard CMS to some to something, um, something greater. And I think with the DA support and the DA growth that you're you're anticipating over the next five years, we'll be able to see the same sort of growth and pivot and innovation in Drupal. So yes, I think maybe I might be a little idealistic uh, because, you know, I, I have a lot invested in, in Drupal success, but, you know, I think, I think the, um, I think the community is scrappy and, and capable of, of shifting as the industry shifts to, to keep Drupal, keep Drupal relevant. Um, Tim Plunkett, I will I will let you um, offer up a response on this if you if you so choose, or we can just move on to our next question. Totally no, your call. No, I would. I mean, Nick hit my point, which is that Drupal will long outlast the Drupal community. Like the software is going to be running, whether we like it or not, uh, for a very long time. I mean, 
you know, there was the whole thing recently where they just had to rehire a bunch of assembly programmers because like banking systems needed overhauls. Like Drupal six is going to be there forever. So uh, whether or not, you know, people will want to work on Drupal is a different question. And I appreciate all of your responses on that. Um, so if it, Windows XP can do it, Drupal can do yeah, it. Yeah, why not? I mean, that's, yeah. that's that, <laughs> Drupal seven is definitely the Windows XP of of the world, uh, oh, the Drupal world. Uh, oh boy, send send all nasty grams to uh, Tim <laughs> at no, just just. Kidding. I was I was there on IRC then when Drupal uh, seven came out twelve years ago, twelve and a half years ago, and uh, I can't believe it's been that long. So what can I say? Um, T2, I wanted to ask you uh, one thing. We talked about the strategic plan a lot. Uh, yeah. But I want to know if you could have one. What is your favorite part of the plan? Oh, wow. That also could be kind of an equally dangerous question for uh, to answer because, you know, every part of the plan has stakeholders, you know, folks that are particularly interested in it. Um, the, uh, um, I, I, but I would say, um, not the fundraising part that's necessary um but that's not um that's not uh, that's not always the, the funnest um although the philanthropic part will be new and exciting and that's great i'm excited about that part uh probably the part i'm most excited about um is is the marketing piece uh and it is because i think what uh what we're envisioning is as you know we're going to focus on um having drupal present at non-drupal events so um, when you walk in an exhibit hall at a tech conference, do you see a standalone Drupal uh, exhibit, uh, you know, where it's just marketing Drupal? It's not about the provider, you know, I and mean, maybe the providers are there too, yes, but it's like saying, here's what Drupal can do for you. Um, I'm, I think I'm excited about that for two reasons. One is it, it feels new for the association to be taking on that role. Um, so there's some uncharted territory here. How do we do that? Uh, again, it's in our mission, our public mission with uh, when we were founded to promote Drupal. You know, it says that that's what we in our in our um, in our filings with the IRS, uh, the, the, the charitable purpose of the Drupal Association is to promote Drupal as a public as a public good. Um, and by definition, public goods often don't have an organization behind it because they're not they're not a profit there. So um, but I'm excited about that part of it. Of, of the newness part and, and having the Drupal Association uh, stepping into that. Um, and I'm also excited for it from, cause that's where we get the feedback from folks about what, you know, why, why aren't people choosing, you know, if, if, if Drupal loses out an RFP to a, to a government agency or something to something else, why is that? And what was missing, you know, if, if it's that simple to find out. And oftentimes in the marketing of it, you find out where you need to go. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that part of the of the um, of the marketing initiative too to kind of figure out why it's why it's not winning in certain areas. Um, that's one of the revelations for me on this call, and this is something we kind of have hinted at on the show for the last probably year, year and a half. But you know, the Drupal community is great. The Drupal project is great. Open source is is fantastic. One one of the strengths of the community and the open source project in general is it's distributed. It means more people can contribute. It means there's more eyes on it. Things are more secure. Things work better. But the truth is all projects have certain pieces that need to be coordinated, right? And, and Drupal as a community does a fair amount of that already, especially with core, right? We have core product manager. We have core and different teams work on some stuff. But there, there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of processes and things that just need a coordinated team to handle that sometimes is really difficult to manage from the ground up. So for the Drupal community does a really good job of having community events around the world, like Drupal camps um, or even meetups. Um, but the bigger events like, you know, DrupalCon would really be hard to do as just a community led initiative. It started as that, but once it got right. too big, that's hard. Right. Marketing, individual companies do tons of marketing and they sell Drupal as well as themselves, obviously, but they sell Drupal. But having a coordinated, like getting 20 or 30 different companies together to just be like, hey, we're going to send people to all these different tech conferences just to tell people about Drupal. Like that would take so much more organization than just having the Drupal Association do it. Um, yes. Another, like the phil philanthropic thing, like this is something that I've thought, you know, I've thought about a lot. Like it's, it's one thing to go to my clients and be like, hey, you should donate to the 
Drupal Association, right? Um, but to have like a coordinated group to go, like you have, I have clients that get money from like, you know, the Balmer Foundation or the Gates Foundation, like that, that's much easier to be handled. Like if a, if a company, right. a specific company is going to go to them, like that foundation is not going to donate to a specific company just to help Drupal. But if the Drupal Association approaches them and says, hey, we, rep we represent this public good, it'll, we'll make sure it's distributed evenly to the community, however, which way, you know, whether it's innovation funds or whatever. Like that just, you just have that ability. Um, the community is start is really, especially for the last two years, has really been pushing non-code contributions. And that started to bleed into other, like the project browsers doing the design initiative, right? So, but, but those are traditionally things like, if it's not an art specific project, getting designers to contribute like mm. logos or modules has, has been, again, I've been something that's traditionally difficult um i don't know i don't know why it just has and i think project project is the first initiative that has really achieved any measure of success there right um getting getting little logos for each individual top 100 module i think it is that that's what the goal is um but but yeah having just a central i i think that's when you know the drupal association has many many hats and many things to take care of but i think I, one of the things i'm seeing that you say is your starting to step up to provide a lot of that infrastructure for the more focused stuff, even if the execution still happens in the community, just right. providing that infrastructure side is, is key. Like you, you, you can't have a, uh, a project this large without some of that. Um, and, and, you know, obviously that requires funding, which is you know, why that's part yes. of the strategic yes. initiative. Yes. That's, a, and that's exactly right. The facilitation role, you know, I mean, that's one of the things, you know, we, we facilitate Drupal being uh, available to anyone who wants to download it and use it, but we, and we do some facilitation of the community and their strategic initiatives, um, but we need to do, that's where we need to do more of that facilitation role. In order for Drupal, I mean, bluntly in my opinion, in order for Drupal to be competitive long-term, all the great ideas and the execution and decision-making that is done at the community level should stay there. It just needs to happen in a coordinated way and, and if we can step in and help facilitate that um uh to uh um to you know get a little bit speed the market or what have you um that's that's the role so not and that's, tell people and, about kind it of, right and then communicate it out uh about what's happening so uh that's it that's exactly the uh um, where I, I think we're going well last question before we close is there anything that we missed that you really would like to tell our listeners uh, you know, I think mm, that's a good question. There's a lot that I still have uh, to, <laughs> to say, probably. But I, I, let me turn around and say, really, uh, I'm still learning. Uh, at the, at, you know, John asked me to be on here. I think back in January, and I said, well, too, too soon. I got, you know, give me time to really understand what's going on. I still feel like I know a lot more, but um, I don't know as much uh, as I want to. <clears throat> so I think one thing is, you know, I'm committed. Um, uh, to be at the Drupal Association long term, uh, I um, have uh, an exciting path forward, um, but I have a lot to learn. So one one thing I would ask is um, to understand that I still have a lot to learn at the Drupal at, at, at about the Drupal community and the project. So um, to uh, bear with me as, as 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 I learn one, and then two, as the association uh, shifts and morphs um uh to um to know that we're doing it to try to serve a serve the community in a new way and so there may be some missteps along the way uh i would ask for grace on that um but also and i'm not worried about this people speaking up and, and being involved where uh, maybe where you know those missteps are you know need to be pointed out so that we don't make them again um so just know that you know if we can instill a sense of um you know, we'll be changing at the Drupal Association and have a little bit of patience with us as we kind of morph to do what, what our board is laid out to do um, uh, is what, what my kind of message. And I have a lot to learn, so I'm happy to um, meet with people at any time um, in terms of you know, on a call or at a DrupalCon or what have you. So, um, you know, well, very open to, to hearing people's ideas. I will say I had the pleasure of uh, of talking to Tim at DrupalCon a couple of a couple of times on a couple of different occasions, and um, you know had really great conversations. Uh, so I would I would implore the community if you're 
at an event or you you see Tim and and you have an idea like definitely definitely uh walk up to him and and express your idea cuz he, he's definitely um great con- conversationalist and and very uh open to uh hearing all of the ideas the community has well Tim thank you for joining us it's a pleasure having you thank you for joining us and uh I'm I'm sure we'll have you on again you know as the strategic initiatives move forward Yep. No, thank you for the opportunity and would would love to come back in the future as time permits. Do you have questions or feedback? Reach out to Talking Drupal on Twitter with the handle Talking Drupal or by email with show at TalkingDrupal.com. You can connect with our hosts and other listeners on Drupal Slack in the Talking Drupal channel. And you can promote your Drupal community event on Talking Drupal. Learn more at TalkingDrupal.com slash TD promo. Get the Talking Drupal newsletter to learn more about our guest hosts show news, upcoming Drupal camps, local meetups, and much more. Sign up for the newsletter at TalkingDrupal.com slash newsletter. And thank you, patrons, for supporting Talking Drupal. Your support is greatly appreciated. You can learn more about becoming a patron by going to TalkingDrupal.com and choosing the Become a Patron button. Okay, so Tim Doyle, if our listeners did want to get in touch with you, had some questions, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, Probably email. So my email is tim.doyle at association.drupal.org. That's probably the easiest way. Just shoot me an email. Great. And Tim Plunkett, how about you? For now, you can reach out via Twitter, as long as that continues to function, at Tim Plunkett. And John Bogosi, how about you? Uh, you can find me on all the major social networks and Drupal.org at John Cozy, and you can find out more about EPAM at epam.com. And you can find me at Nick's Fan pretty much everywhere. If you've enjoyed listening, we've enjoyed talking. Have a good one, everyone. See you next week. <laughs>